Hello. Today, we're going to be reading Mingling, written by Stephen Cosgrove, illustrated by Robin James. Sharing your environment with others is rewarding. West of west and east of east lay the forever forest called the Panda Pines. Because of the gentle rains, plants grew there in great profusion. Rice nut trees and bamboo thickets shimmered in the magical mist that surrounded the Panda Pines. As you can well imagine, this forest of bamboo provided a marvelous shelter for feathered birds of every kind, including cockatiels and cockatoos, and even a pair of parrots. All of them would flutter and flitter above and about the thicket, chittering and chattering their melodic songs. Other than the birds, the only creature that lived there was a rumbly, grumbly panda bear called Mingling. Mingling had two passions in life, to eat and to sleep. She wasn't grouchy by nature, but the birds of the thicket were eating up her food and robbing her of her rest to boot. It seemed the birds were eating all of Mingling's pine nuts, her favorite thing to eat. Then they would sit in the trees after they ate, singing at the top of their feathery lungs. That would wake and frustrate the poor hungry panda even more. One special morning, when it would have felt so good just to sleep another hour or two, the birds started singing and flapping their wings against the bamboo leaves, making the loudest racket you ever heard. With a rough and a woof, Mingling woke up, woke up abruptly. Why can't they wake up when I wake up? She grumbled as she rubbed the sleep from her eyes. What I need is a bird who will talk when I talk, walk when I walk, and most of all, sleep when I sleep. With that, she sat on her haunches and roared to the trees, scaring a bird or two. Mingling knew she was going to have just another really bad day. Because she couldn't sleep as long as she wanted or eat all that she wished, Mingling became more and more cranky. She stomped around looking for pine nuts, getting grumblier and grumblier. Whenever she was just as cranky as she could be, the birds always started to sing a happy song. In a furious rage, she would grab some of the branches in her mighty paws and shake them like a whip in the wind. I don't know if you have ever tried to sing and hold on to a branch at the same time, but the birds were finding it extremely difficult. Mingling was so bearish that she began chasing and snapping at them with her teeth. She never caught one and probably wouldn't know what to do if she did. But once or twice, a bird's happy fluttering turned into frightened frittering and a feather or two graced the corner of Mingling's mouth as the bird escaped. One day, all of the birds, including the cockatiels and cockatoos, decided that they could stand no more. They packed up their nests and together they all flew away. The silence that followed was like a golden blanket to Mingling, who wrapped herself in the delicious hush. Peacefully, she ate and ate tender bamboo shoots and leaves. It was so absolutely still that she almost started to giggle once or twice. <laughs> but that would have broken the warm, gentle stillness of the day. It was so perfectly quiet that when she finished eating her fill, she curled into a soft, furry ball and, with no one or no bird to distract her, fell fast asleep. Minutes turned to hours. Hours turned to days. Days turned to weeks. Suddenly, the peace and quiet of the thicket began to press on Mingling's ears. Just as the birds had made too much noise, the silence hung heavy on her shoulders. She wandered throughout Panda Pines, searching high and low for even one bird, but none could be found. Finally, as Mingling gave up, resigned to her fate, she spied a rather plump red parrot sitting on a bamboo branch. She looked at the parrot. The parrot looked at her. Neither spoke a word. Finally, Mingling could take the silence no more and eagerly said, Do you speak? The parrot cocked its head to one side and staring at Mingling with one silly eye said, Do you speak? Mingling slowly scratched her head and said, Well, of course, but do you speak? The parrot paced from one end to the other of the branch to the other and said, Well, of course, but do you speak? Mingling growled, You're being silly. <laughs> then the parrot growled, You're being silly. Mingling's eyes opened wide with amazement. She had found the perfect bird. A bird who would sleep when she slept and talk when she talked and say the words she loved to hear. Her own. This is just great, Mingling thought to herself. 
This is my kind of bird. She began to walk slowly around the tree as the parrot mimicked her every move. Panda bears are great, she snickered out loud. The parrot, true to its name, snickered right back. Panda bears are great! And Mingling is the greatest, <laughs> she laughed into her furry paw. And Mingling is the greatest, the parrot laughed into its feathered wings. With a smile as wide as the panda pines, Mingling, with the parrot waddling right behind, giggled her way into the forest. The next day, after the sun had been up for an hour or more, Mingling stretched in the warm leaves that were her nest. What a gorgeous morning, she yawned. Above her head, she heard feathers rustle, and a squawking voice yawned right back. What a gorgeous morning! So it went from day to day with Mingling talking on and on and the parrot repeating her every word. As the days wore on, Mingling got just a little bit upset about their conversations. Though they talked on and on throughout the day, it didn't seem that the parrot was adding anything. Finally, one afternoon, as Mingling was getting a drink down at the stream, as usual, the parrot was doing the same, the panda shouted loudly, You dumb creature! Why don't you climb a tree and sing or something? The parrot, its feathers ruffled, shouted just as loudly, You dumb creature! Why don't you climb a tree and sing or something? Mingling's eyes widened in anger and she screamed, If you repeat what I say one more time, I'll eat you for dessert, you ball of feathered fluff! For the first time in a long time, the parrot didn't repeat her statement. The air was thick with silence. The parrot fluttered up into a tree and looked down at the angry, confused panda bear. What do you want, bear? First you want silence, then you don't, but now you do? Sheepishly, Mingling sat and gazed at the ground. I don't know. I thought I wanted it quiet, but that was boring. Then I thought I wanted to hear someone talk when I talked, and now I don't know what I want. She paused, deep in thought. Maybe if the birds all came back. Well, said the parrot, they'll never come back if all you're going to do is roar at them. Yeah, but they make so much noise and I need a lot of sleep. Hmm. The parrot paced on a branch, thinking out loud. With a bit of cooperation and a pinch of compromise, I think you both can survive. From that day forward, whenever Mingling wished for silence, she did nothing more than stuff bamboo leaves into her ears. The birds were so happy singing without interruption that they carried great piles of pine nuts and the most tender leaves for her to eat when she woke from her afternoon naps. And sometimes, when Mingling wasn't looking and couldn't hear, the plump red parrot mimicked her every word. If you live in a forest and don't know how to share it, Remember a panda named Mingling and a very silly parrot. The end. And that's it for today's episode of Storytime with Jen. We will see you tomorrow.